हेलो एंड वेलकम टू गाँव कनेक्शन एज यू ऑल नो म्यूकोरमाइकोसिस और ब्लैक फंगस इन्फेक्शन आर राइजिंग रैपिडली इन इंडिया नाउ दैट ब्लैक वाइट येलो एंड रिसेंटली क्रीम इन्फेक्शन हैव बीन रिपोर्टेड इन द कंट्री वॉट आर दीज इन्फेक्शन वाई इज देर अ सडन राइज इन फंगल इन्फेक्शन आर यू एट रिस्क वॉट अबाउट रूरल इंडिया टूडे वी आर ज्वाइन बाय डॉक्टर श्रीकांत अम्बालकर who has been a consultant in clinical microbiology and infection in the uk for the last 12 years so welcome to gaun connection uh, so my you. first question is yeah so why india is reporting a decline in covid-19 cases rising fungal infections have added to the woes there are reports of significant increase in black white and yellow fungus throughout india why is there a sudden rise in fungal infections in the country can you explain sir yeah um thanks shivani for having me um i think um it's quite interesting i mean we are um, hearing this reports of black yellow and uh, white fungus in fact it is quite misleading uh, because uh, we uh, in microbiology we don't talk like this so it is uh, some sort is is misleading and that is creating panic amongst the public so i think we should try to avoid these um, terms and i would explain i mean why why there is increase in this infection it's not nothing new in this thing i mean we have seen uh, uh, increased number of case reports and and various studies reporting this um, uh, fungal infect invasive fungal infections in covid patients of last 18 months now so the first few cases were reported in china in the, in the month of january uh, it's uh, in 2020 so uh, it's nothing new and it is quite uh, uh, well reported in the literature now yeah because this um, uh, particular virus uh, has got something uh, and there's a definite correlation between this invasive fungal infections uh, and and covid-19 so can you uh, tell me what causes these infections and what are the risk factors for this infection and who are the vulnerable groups yeah so yeah this uh, uh, the most common fungus which is uh, the 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 what we call is a mold which is present everywhere the aspergillus and and your mucor mucor mycosis uh, this fungus is present at the spores of this fungus are present in the environment everywhere so we all are breathing in all the spores but we don't get those infection the the, the people with normal immunity normal immune function they do the immune system is not working properly examples like patients with some uh, cancers patients with who are on immunosuppressive therapy patients who are in fact hiv positive patients so where there is a, a decrease in the immunity or the immune system is suppressed those patients are vulnerable and we do see Uh, this sort of infection like mucor mycosis and aspergillosis quite commonly in those group of patients this is a new group i mean this uh, since for last 18 months we have seen slight increase in the in the number of cases in invasive uh, uh, fungal infections uh, in covid-19 patients so uh, most of the uh, reports of the uh, the case series and, and and the case reports are from uh china and and the europe and america as well uh, we haven't had those sort of infection like the most commonly reported uh, fungal infection invasive fungal infection in this group of patient was aspergillosis and we have seen loads of cases uh, reported in the literature for last 18 months we haven't had many cases of mucormycosis here in western world i mean in, in uk we at least i haven't seen any not single case of mucormycosis in my hospital but we have seen many of other fungal infection like aspergillosis which i was uh, mentioning so it's nothing new but in in uh, in india i think what we are seeing is is a exponential rise of mucormycosis cases reported which is really alarming i mean we haven't seen this sort of numbers in in, in uh, anywhere uh, in the world and and that's quite uh, um, uh, alarming and interesting as well because why we are getting this infection so what are the risk factors so um, uh, not just for the mucor even for the aspergillosis and the mycomycosis the risk factors are like this virus in itself causes a, a significant damage to your respiratory uh, epithelial cells 
So that makes, um, uh, sorry, that gives a chance to this fungus, which are the opportunistic infections like mucormycosis and aspergillus. This fungus can invade the tissue and, and they can cause uh, invasive fungal infections. And that is what is happening because of the, uh, because of the invasion of uh, uh, the respiratory epithelial or mucosal cells uh, due to this virus that makes you prone to get this opportunistic infection with this fungus. The another uh, risk factor is uh, steroids, the, the use of immunosuppressive therapy. And one of the example is steroids. Steroids uh, uh, suppresses your immune system and that makes you vulnerable or susceptible for, for uh, this fungal infections like mucus uh, muc and, and aspergillosis. Uh, steroid use, uh, I just want to make a comment on that because uh, yes, uh, steroids have been found to be beneficial uh, uh, in the treatment of COVID-19 and there are good studies from UK which has recommended the use of steroids in certain group of patients, not, not for everybody, not in patients who, are, who just have got mild infection. So it is recommended in patients who has got severe infection and those who are on the mechanical ventilation. So this group of patients does do benefit from, from the steroids, but not we sh should not use steroids in the patient who has got mild infection. What is happening, uh, and this is my perception and whatever I have read in the media and I've been talking to my colleagues back in India, is that steroids been used uh, extensively, even for the mild infection, and that is probably that may be the cause of this sudden rise in increase in the uh, in the uh, uh, mucomycosis cases. Having said that, there are other things as well you need to consider. So. Uh, uh, um, that diabetes is another risk factors. So diabetes, uh, 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 uncontrolled diabetes causes hyperglycemia, even the steroid, steroid can, can induce hyperglycemia, and that is what is very uh, um, fertile um, ground for growth of this mucormycosis especially. Hyperglycemia, that, that, that fungus loves this thing, high glucose and then immunosuppression along with all this uh, uh, damage caused by this um, uh, COVID virus in, in by itself. So these are the risk factors which, which makes you susceptible, which makes the patient susceptible for getting this mucormycosis and aspergillosis and, and, and also other invasive fungal infections. Uh, uh, another uh, important thing is, because you might ask, um, or you just you need to question why this is happening now, okay? So this is a very important question because um, right. the steroids has been used for a long time. I mean, uh, loads of patients are put on steroids for so many other reasons. So this is nothing new. Loads of patients are with diabetes in India or in all the places. So why this is happening now? So, so the answer to that question, I mean, there are uh, loads of reasons why this is happening now. So first thing I would say that this was happening before as well. And I'm not sure whether you have come across with the studies from India. There was a very nice paper published by a group in Jaipur, uh, Savai Man Singh uh, Medical College. They have reported uh, a significant number of cases of mucormycosis before the second wave. So there were cases before as well, but they were in, not in that numbers. So why this is happening now? Because we are getting, because the number of COVID cases has gone exponentially. That has increased so many, I mean, many fold increase in the COVID-19 cases during the second wave. So whether this is just a proportional rise in the uh, mucormycosis cases, we need to look into that as well, because it's just that, and that will help us to address that question, why now? Why this is during the second wave only? So as I said, it was there, it was reported, but the numbers were small. But at that time, the numbers of COVID also were small. Now we have got an exponential rise in the cases of the COVID patients. So that might be the reason, one of the reasons. So there are other theories as well. I mean, it's just multifactorial. It's not just the steroid. It's not just uh, your diabetes, because you must have uh, seen the reports that some patient who hasn't had any steroids, who hasn't, um, uh, they are not diabetic, they were not in hospital, they still got the mucormycosis. So what is it? So it, as I mentioned, it, even the virus can itself 
can cause the immune dysregulation and significant proportion of patients can be susceptible due to this uh, for this invasive fungal infections. Right. So, sir, is there a role of zinc and antibiotics behind this outbreak? Yeah, I mean, th these are the very, um, um, what do you call, uh, many hypotheses are floating around, especially on the social media. So, uh, you know, this, and it's quite amazing. The WhatsApp is quite amazing, though, because you see all these hypotheses and, and the theories, um, like whether zinc is responsible, whether other antibiotics are responsible, whether your oxygen, uh, this industrial oxygen is responsible. Uh, there's another theory like um, um, this uh, ivermectin is responsible for this. So, all sort of things. So what I would suggest at the moment, at this moment of time, there is, uh, we haven't got a proper answer to all these questions. Yes, uh, zinc, uh, they are saying now zinc promotes the growth of mucor. So, but I don't know whether this is the cause of the problem because we, nobody knows unless you do a scientific investigation, then only you would come to know whether the, what is the cause of this, why there is an increase. And uh, as I, I, if you ask me, my opinion is this is due to the increased number of COVID cases, and there's a proportional rise in mucor cases as well. It is because of the increased use of steroid. It is because of your uh, uh, the virus itself causing the problem, ca causing immune dysregulation, and also uh, a very high number of diabetic patients who are um, uh, not, uh, I mean, the, the sugar levels are not controlled. They are not being followed up properly. Uh, and, and that, uh, uh, along with all these factors, this, that, that make you susceptible to get this mucormycosis cases. I can't say now at the moment that whether there's a single factor which is responsible, like zinc. Uh, we don't have that evidence now. So, sir, uh, the second wave has also affected the rural population of the country. How are our villages at risk of the rising fungal cases? Um, I think uh, uh, there is nothing uh, uh, distinctive that, that makes the villages or population in villages more susceptible for mycomycosis. Okay, so these are the same common risk factor which I already mentioned, like diabetes, uh, increased use of steroids. Uh, so these are the common risk factors and the virus itself. They, they, are, they can cause mucormycosis in, in, in that group of patients as well. So there's nothing specific about the village population. The only thing I would suggest because uh, because of the lack of facilities to monitor this patient in, when you get the COVID. So post-COVID management like follow-up is not possible in the rural setting because you need to, as, as I mentioned, the steroid can induce hypoglycemia uh, uh, and, and if, if you've got a, a huge population who has got diabetes in the rural setting as well, then it is difficult to monitor their blood sugar and these are, that, that may be the problem. But as such, there's no distinctive or specific cause to worry uh, about the rural population. It, it is the same risk in, in that, that group as well. So um, what can we do uh, to prevent? I mean, the, of course, there are this hygiene and other stuff, but uh, the most important thing is to control the risk factors. We can control the various risk factors. The, we should not be using uh, steroids unnecessarily. So we need to stop that. The second thing is, we need to monitor this patient quite closely, like patients with all the high risk patients, which I've mentioned, uh, those group of patients should be followed regularly. And, and we need to monitor the glu blood glucose and also patient education is important. We need to inform the patient that these are, these are the things which you need to look for. And if there is a problem, you should straight away uh, try to seek the medical help. And this is how we can control it. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for sparing time for this. Thank you. Thank you.